of our series here, Von Ivan against Theodosius. This time playing on the south of Crossroads after devastating Theodosius in the first game. Von Ivan is going to be playing as the Soviet Union. He is indeed, and in the north side, we're seeing OKW for the first, uh, well, one of the first times, I think second time today, maybe. That's We've fine. seen a lot of Wehrmacht. It's nice to finally see the other Axis faction uh, played by the German himself in the north. It was actually uh, Theo that we saw playing OKW previously on, on Feynmanville and doing a very good job of it against Finn Deed. Um, so maybe we have a little idea about what to expect from Theo, but I'm pretty sure Theo doesn't have an idea of what to expect from Von Ivan. I, mean, that, I would hope maybe gives him a, a bit of a premonition to shake up his build a little bit and pay attention very closely to what Von Ivan is doing. I said, I mean, Von Ivan's already locked in guards, rifle, combined arms, tactics. He has been using it a lot on stream, but Von Ivan Soviets is no longer the formidable force it once was. He once used to have uncounterable builds as Soviets. His new uncounterable build, in his words, is as Wehrmacht. So um, it's strange that uh, Von Ivan's top faction has swapped hands slightly. I think that's fair. I think it's uh, if you're able to spot very strong things in different factions. Um, but uh, as, as you say, so um, Von Ivan's going with a multiple conscript build into a traditional, I would expect, tier 3, and then tier 4 to get that KV-1, because the KV-1, in Von Ivan's uh, words, it, it counters the Pumas of the mobile defense strategy, and uh, he quite likes it for that reason. I quite like his capping order with the Kubel, to be honest, because he's attacking the right. Uh, sorry, this is uh, for Theo. He's attacking the right, which obviously draws Vaughn all the way over there. And then with the Kubel, he's going for strategic points quickly, um, which are quicker to cap and going to get the resources, you know, multiple resources flowing in faster. And uh, you, uh, you, I think, A, uh, made a very good point before um, about uh, the resources, how actually two strategic points, which can be capped quicker, actually um, probably more beneficial in terms of fuel income, just for what they generate. Mm. and an actual fuel point itself, so he seems to be going for uh, resource priority there in a, in a good way. Yeah, that's probably what the weakest uh, part of Company of Heroes 2 when it came out, is they, they did away with strategic points and made something called standard territory point. Five munitions, three fuel, every single one, so two of them is actually better than a high fuel or a high munitions, so all the map designs in our community, they kind of became obsolete and didn't make sense anymore. It still stands true to this day. You, you're honestly better getting two standard territory points than a high fuel or a high munitions. Well, the munitions, I'm not sure, because the munitions is plus 11. But, I mean, it's not enough. Why would you sacrifice you, getting fuel as well? Sorry, but you'd also be getting plus 6 fuel, you know? Yeah. So you're yeah. getting plus 6 fuel, plus 10 uh, munitions instead of, you know, size plus 7 fuel and plus 11 munitions. It's just... The, the map design inverted itself, and... Uh, yeah, yeah Code 1 was so heavily focused around... Uh, yeah, everyone would rush to those fuel points. It <laughs> kind of dictate the maps. It made the, made the cutoff so much more important, you know? And, yeah. uh, I, I, I've, I've not found a single person that uh, uh, prefers the Code 2 style. But, uh, you know, Relic uh, have, have been saying that surveys, they might be making a new game. We just don't know yet, but it'd be interesting to see which of those two systems they, they go back to. Or if, even if they make a new system, maybe all truck-based system. That'd be cool. <laughs> Like, you need trucks to bring on the fuel, and then you need trucks to get resist resources. Oh, damn. No bases either, just trucks. I'd love that. Oh, it'd be like um, what Command & Conquer did to their series. It'd be fantastic. It would be, and that was... Yeah, exactly. Being sarcastic for anybody that, that doesn't. <laughs> no, just let the trucks <laughs> Come on, they, there are all a lot of Germans out there, I know. And a lot of Americans. And, and classically, the British humour doesn't resonate overly well with those two distinct uh, cultural subgroups there. Uh, better Panzer Schleppers out, let's see what this baby becomes. He's got fuel to go either, and looks like he's going to go for the Battle by his positioning. Wouldn't surprise me, wouldn't surprise me at all. I think that's a safe bet. And I think I'll want to have healing on his units if he's going to be facing Von's conscript army. Five of them on the field right now. And uh, they've already got their Molotovs and anti-tank grenades. So, uh, it's a formidable force. It Bond's is indeed. already invested in the flamethrower as well, so any buildings, any green cover positions going to be able to flush out the Volks Grenadiers uh, very fast. I think Theo is trying to match him in terms of, in terms of manpower. 
But the folks grenadiers um, pushing away. Those poor conscripts there, they didn't stand a chance on that western fuel. Meanwhile, in the east, Theodosios has been able to somewhat cap that fuel point. It's taking forever. The conscripts are dawning on him as we speak. And they're pushing him away in no time at all. Some news from the Ost front uh, for those of you that don't want to, who want to watch perhaps about the Imperial Day. I don't know who's casting this one, but uh, it's the DevM results. DevM has won every game today, uh, every match rather, 2 0. He's now the first semi finalist confirmed for tomorrow. Um, so, very interesting to see that here. He's, he's gone through the competition like hot knife with butter. I do believe, though, Dan, Hooligan put up the best fight. It took an hour for DevM to beat Hooligan in game two. So, GG wow. well played to Hooligan. I'm sure we're allowed to me. Hooligan's quite young. I actually think he's going to develop into a very good player um, in this uh, in this franchise. This is uh, now 13. Okay. Getting older every year. Kubelvorgen down. Great work by the Mosin against the conscripts there. Uh, Von is uh, starting to eat up the map. Theo just doesn't look strong against Von at, at all. Um, you know, he was so confident against Aimstrong, confident to push. Von just kind of has this this aura about him that, that you just don't want to you don't want to dive against Von. You don't want to get caught up too close to him. Every time he has, it's been a nightmare. And uh, the flak half tracks coming on the field right now. And uh, Theo did play this very well in the previous game we saw him. Uh, so previous series we saw him play OKW, but you know with with five cons or with AT grenades. There's room nice for uh, room for. Uh, some nice incendiary grenades by the folks grenadiers. Uh, all, all it means is the conscripts have to relinquish their position for a short while. Meanwhile, in the west, they're setting up sandbag positions and cementing their position there. And uh, it's interesting to see that the four-man combat engineers now retreating for Von Ivan, which I think harkens the call of the next tier structures and into beloved T-70 land. Ooh, 18 8 <laughs> The model that was throwing it got killed and... He kind of hot swapped it to the second model. That's Theodosius going for a good decap there. Again, constantly trying to stop resources go to Von Ivan. That's uh, one of the things that is going to end the game quickly. Probably wants to salvage that Kubel as well if he can get if he can get a good cover position. I tell you what, Dan. It sounds like you're starting to uh, get tired. May I recommend Emerge Energy Drink? Oh well, I say God. energy drink. It's more of a focus drink. <laughs> you meant to say, yeah, of course I am. Sorry, do I, do I sound bad? I'm not tired. <laughs> no, it, we're doing a joke. It's it's for the advertising campaign. Oh, never no. mind. <laughs> you meant to say, of course I am. Oh, oh, do you have a beverage you could recommend? <laughs> Okay, folks, Grenadiers holding up in the east. The onslaught from the conscript, both veterans he won. There's the Molotov. He's gone both mollies and 18 aids in this game, which has um, slightly uh, delayed him, but he has had a good control. 35 fuel spent on both of them. I feel like Theo's uh, a little bit afraid here. He's uh, already bringing out a raquette, and there hasn't been a single vehicle on the field so far. Good to get it out within 10 minutes anyway. He's probably expecting that something's going to come out. I think that's the, the key point about this. Von is, of course, building Tier 3 at the moment. That's about to go up any second. He will be able to get T70 out quickly. And uh, at least Theodosius will be prepared. He's going to have to defend this so well, though. I mean, with all these cons running around, I don't think the uh, Raketan... I don't think the Raketan is safe by any means. It's no, not safe. And... Um... With the conscripts swarming it, the T-70 is going to be able to come in. And this isn't just a T-70. This is a Von Eichen T-70. And um, it's going to have a field day, quite honestly, a field day. There are four Panzerfaust platforms out there, and there will be the Raketenwerfer, but uh, I, I fully expect Von Eichen to exploit the situation. Let's see the PPSH upgrades. That should tell Theodosius what the commander pick might be. I uh, didn't see what else Von actually loaded in with, but if he has been paying attention, probably know that Von plays the uh, plays the Gars rifle frequently. 
Yeah, he does. If he's been watching the stream, I mean, Von Ivan's been going Moba Death or God Rifle Combined Arms Tactics. I need to think of a good uh, acronym for that. S Sir Rat, Sir Rat. That'd be the that'd be the initialism. Uh, but anyway, uh, that doesn't really go, does it? But regardless, uh, you know, it's, it's you can predict Von Ivan. You can prepare for Von Ivan. Oh, you can predict to be prepared. Stern Pioneers there, they nearly, nearly triggered their own mind there. The Raketten missed his oh! first shot. Stern Pioneers go down to the T70. Great push, yeah, I think the Conscript triggered the mine. There's the mine though. Four man shoe mine. But, uh, oh, and the Conscript's about to die perhaps. They got an AT grenade off though. And they survive. It's Insult really to injury. Really wanted. It's such a it, shame to be honest. Here comes another AT nade. He's just constantly throwing those things in. There's no Stern Pioneers to repair for at least a minute. Constant pressure applied Von Ivan. How is this? How can Theo do so damn well against Aimstrong? I suppose it's because Von Ivan's literally in that elite top echelon of players. Some Theo actually anything. had the right idea though with the mine, the raquette, and he actually had everything out in the right time. I think he was unlucky. Um, but then even you know to be unlucky, he just he really isn't delivering any kind of response to the conscripts. The uh, flak half track didn't even suppress until the conscripts were really close, which I think is is kind of worrying for that unit on the field. Um, you know, if you can't suppress one of them, stop it getting close. You're not going to have a chance to micro against <laughs> against five of them. <laughs> you think you've protected yourself against uh, how von Ivan plays, though, and then when it comes, not everybody can withstand it. I mean, Loveness struggles to withstand the von Ivan aggression, and uh, he has a great strategic mind for knowing exactly when and where to push. Uh, it's not a matter of what's with, because he pushes with everything at the same time. Um, and uh, mines should, in theory, help protect against that. But in practice, it's a whole different beast. One of the interesting things, actually, the, the sandbags, the conscripts have been laying really really useful in fact all the green cover advantage it just uh, if anything it just stalls out a lot of engagements and just continues to allow time for resource build up and it's very difficult though as soon as Theo moves over to the left you can see Von he's prodding from the right again he's taking all the territory on the right and he's prodding units there gonna cause the half track to relocate and just really leaving Theo with nothing I don't think Theo is doing badly though I have to say that it's um He's at least handling stuff, and he's only lost the stern pilots. Um, he does have uh, a slight positive KD. He has, of course, lost the stern pioneers, but I think he's past. I think Von Ivan's starting to gather steam now. He's getting mechanized Compania up. Um, there will be a little wait until he builds anything from it, which might give Theo the chance he needs to get back into things, but. Uh, yeah, round one to Von Ivan, let's just put it that way. Got an MG on the field, so uh, there's a lot of emphasis on trying to stop infantry pushes at the moment. Uh, a lot of suppression units. Anything to stop Look. the conscripts going. I think if you can actually provide something where the conscripts can't keep rushing in the way that they are, huh. maybe he'll be able to do something, but at the moment there's too many conscripts, too many angles. There is. They just, Look at not these able. PSHs. They're uh, storming in from the west side. I mean, the suppression platforms do get them, but there's more conscripts coming in from all angles on the other side. I mean, they're all within that cone of fire of that MG34, but uh, they can only suppress one at a time. I think one of the good things as well is that the, uh, the six-man squads have so much staying power, so even when they do take suppression, they can long out the engagement and not really care too much. The reinforcement isn't that high. You know, they're great units for that kind of thing. Uh, it's really yeah. like how the faction is supposed to be played, whether it's like merging as well. But, um, you know, Von's strategies are overwhelming. I think that's the key thing, is um, using something that's uh, very dominant in the early game taking its advantage and amplifying it. Von Ivan will find, he's very good at finding the meta, as in the most efficient way to play, in the most brutally effective way possible. And um, 
As I say, his Soviet isn't quite as dominant as his Wehrmacht. It does have a little bit more room to be countered. But uh, in this game, he's played everything to perfection. Not just his uh, strategy and build order, but his actually incisive infantry pushes, his engagements. And that's why he's improved so much in this past two years, I would say. Over the past uh, two years, steadily, Von Ivan has gotten a lot better at this game. Uh, he no longer loses squads unnecessarily all the time. He no longer picks engagements he can't win. He no longer does stupidly late retreats. Although, there's one in the West. I really hope he doesn't prove me wrong here. <laughs> Staying in for that. There we go. It's a bit of a late retreat, but it wasn't stupidly late. <laughs> um, regardless, I mean, the point stands that he's gotten a lot better. And he's now the third seed in the world, but uh, there's arguments that he could have been in the top two. But obviously, as we've already mentioned, Loveness was given seed one as a mark of respect and tradition for having won last year. Gosh. Theo's really going to be wishing that Raketten was able to hit shots off the first fire. Hmm. It's a serious issue with that unit is actually uh, targeting, even when it has a clear period of time where it can line up the shot. Very, very unfortunate when that does this. It'll be very frustrating. Oh, we see uh, Von Ivan here. He's taking ground attack shots through the hedgerow with his AT gun. Oh. Just a uh, constant pressure. And uh, even though he doesn't really have everything that he needs, he's going to be building the KV-1 at the moment. And uh, I think that's what he's going to be able to push through with. Oh, so Such a beast of a vehicle. ISG. He's got no, he's got nothing to take nothing. this down. Nothing. And look at this hunk. 45 tons of Stalinium. Uncountable Stalinium. It's only got the 76mm cannon. But it's the original heavy tank of World War II. And just as the Germans found on the push during Barbarossa. There's not much you can do. KV-1 is coming for you. Von's going in. He's uh, starting to turn up the heat before the KV-1 gets in the field. It should help him to identify one work where the Raketten is. Maybe push away a couple of infantry units. And here comes the KV-1. First sighting. Raketten penetrates, but it doesn't do much health damage. And the KV-1 has its eyes set on the flak half-track. Whilst oh. all that's going on, the T-70 is shredding the infantry. And uh, yeah, Von knows exactly what he wants. It's very much Soviet military tactics in their very essence attack puncture and take out the most uh, high priority target immediately and for Von there that was that flak half track he probed he delved in and he got results that's what makes him such a dangerous player this could be his year down this is so powerful right now one of the interesting things with Von as well is because he's a streamer you know, you see him play these tactics all the time. Anybody in their right mind would be able to study this and you know, try and figure out a counter. He does just play it so well. <laughs> yeah, he makes it makes it uncounterable really just by his play style. So. In a way, Von Ivan needs to find a build that's uncounterable for him. Because he's up against stream snipers all the time, every time. He invites it. He, he never shies away from a stream snipe. He never... Uh, even when Dev, um, I mean, let's just be honest, was stream sniping him 24-7 in May, Von Ivan just kept on honing his... Uh, that's why, by the way, his build is the most powerful in the world right now. Honing his Mobadev uh, build. And in a way, Dev M has now ensured that Von Ivan has got the best build in the world, although he, you know, Dev M thinks he might be able to counter it. But uh, you can't... You have to respect Von Ivan for that. He just takes it. And even when Devon turned the tide of the battle and started beating it, then Von Ivan starts to hone things and get things better. And he never shies away from a fight, and you've got to respect the man for that reason. No, it's good quality. In fact, uh, when you look at like players that have put so much hour, like so many hours into streaming and playing the game, you know, like Von is one of those people that has played a long time and handles it very, very well. He does. Um, you know, stream abuse is, <laughs> is difficult, but he's just... Yeah. It's, it's made him the player you see in front you know. of you right now. He he used to have a forum with a, a you know sub forum saying stream sniping. He used to organise it. So I think he comes from a, a world where it's completely fair game, and it actually has made him a pretty beasty player. As we now see Theodosios reduced to a small pocket of resistance. He does have a lot of units still, but. Uh, he does, and they've got veteran right units, but he, he just doesn't have uh, VPs. The enemy has taken what we have secured. 
And uh, there goes tripwire up. flares, and that's going to be Von's signal right. Okay, actually, Theo's going on the right-hand side. Again, really good to just notice that. And, and also, because the tripwire flare, he's now got the vision to lay down the IL-2, and I think that's fantastic. He was waiting for that to happen. There you go. I mean, this this game looks all but over. But uh, Dan, I mean, it's starting to show us that we have Devon versus Von Ivan in a semi-final tomorrow. All this story, all this build-up, all this arms race between those two players in particular in auto match over the past few months. It's all going to come to a head in this first qualification tournament, and that is pretty hype in itself. I think that's going to be a really, really interesting game tomorrow. Actually, it's going to be too. Uh, and, and Von's going to have a bit of a grudge, let's be honest. Um, yes. <laughs> after GCS last year. He is, of course, when DevM used those RNG bombs to send Von Ivan out and uh, and then did it again um, in the replay after the bug splat. Um, you know. Well, then, uh, again, with Von Ivan, he showed up at GCS uh, 1 final. And he was ready for helping hands, uh, with a bottle of liquor in his hand, he, you know, half drunk. It made it even better at the game, it's crazy. <laughs> it's uh, Theo here just taking a break. He's, um, he's strategized. I'd like to think that right now he's he's got his pen and paper. He's like, right, do you not just forget the game. He's got his whiteboard and he's like, right, Von probably got stuff here, here, here and here. Um, <laughs> so he's putting a mine, he's got a, it's a POW camp, Danny. Very much a fortress. Uh, <laughs> is it a trap? It's like that th theme from Starship Troopers where they're in that uh, fort and then all the, uh, the arachnids come. It's very much... <laughs> oh no, he's leaving, this is a bad idea, he should not leave. There's, there's bad things out there waiting for you, Theo. Get back into base. Here goes the trip I think trip if I was to oh. missed it. He's going to trigger it. No. Hmm. Alright, he's got the panther out, so he's clearly just stalling ah, for that. Um, that makes sense. <laughs> I, well, I don't know. I don't know how much time you want to give Von Ivan, because in that time he's managed to get two T-70s and KV-1 as, uh, as the composition. But let's have a look if he can make anything out of this push. It isn't all or nothing. He does have mark target on the panther if he wants to use it. Instead, he's going to drive into the conscripts. He needs to be so careful because they do have snaring capabilities. Oh. To crush all of his own men, make the challenge a little bit harder. Panther is on the warpath here. T70 is staying alive for now. Here come the skill planes. Panther's um, coiling away. We've got both MGs suppressed over there. Here comes Clement Vereshilov, the big fat uh, general of the Russian army. Point blank range. Will he penetrate? No. <laughs> How he kept working on it as well. I actually don't think he's doing too badly at this attempt. I wanted to try and get the Faust. I think it might be better if he works on the VP, but Theo pushing in. He needs to be careful of the flank from Von Ivan from the north. T70 is yeah, coming in. T70, the combat mode. It's uh... Oh, it's gone to combat mode. Incredible idea by Von Ivan. We've got a snared panther. It's now been flanked by a heavy tank. Oh, the, the disgrace of it all. It's not going anywhere. He really wants to get the kill on the first KV-1, but it costs so much more. Main gun destroy critical at 30% health. Quite sickening. And there you go. Yep, it's down. Theo surrenders. Isn't going to put up a fight for that. It's a quick series. 2-0. Von Ivan showing us uh, very, very strong gameplay. And, uh, you know, at first, we have no video camera for myself, but uh, Dan and myself can speak to you through the medium of If you want to, so. it will work if you call, so... Will it? Do you really think yeah, so? Yeah, yeah, Oh, I fixed it. I reinstalled it, so there you go. Oh, it was on your end. I told you that. Here you go, put your video on. Oh, it was your end? Yes. I oh. told you, I took the noise gate off. Skype doesn't recognize 